going? Yes. Hello. Um, I just wanted uh, to post a post-operative video um, on my son. Um, it's been, uh, as of Wednesday, it'll have been five weeks since he had the surgery. Um, I was leery to post pictures of him while he was in the hospital just because of the graphic nature of the surgery. Um, but I was so glad that I did because I received so many messages and posts and just the words of encouragement and support and sincerity and the, just the genuine concern about my son was so meant so much to me and I was able to show him some of them and meant so much to him and to my husband my and my son's father and it just really really helped during a time when we, we kind of felt like I don't even know when you're so raw and you're having to you have no control over a situ or little control over a situation and you're watching your child go through something like that it just really all I can say I have no words really it just it really really meant more than any of you know so thank you so much for that um, he's doing fine it's been five it'll be five weeks like I said um, he ended up um, yeah I don't know I, there's gonna be I'm gonna avoid a lot of what happened in the hospital just because I'm still I, I don't really want to go back to that time um, even though it was a controlled surgery you know and we were told what was gonna happen nothing can ever prepare you for seeing your child come out of that type of surgery um, and I, I know I mentioned it my, in my previous video but I've been asked it again um, the reason why this tumor was so rare is a lot of you know um, these grand cell or huge cell granulomas that happen in the center part of your mandible area that is common um, I googled it and that it does seem to be quite common um, what made this one different was that intertwined throughout the tumor were blood vessels and nerves so uh, that contributed to the length of time where they were trying to shrink this tumor um, and get information from at one point my the oral surgeon had said he was um, talking to surgeons down in the states and kind of collaborating with them trying to figure out the best way to remove this tumor because it was just so rare that he'd never seen one like this before so that is what led to the surgery being such a lengthy surgery um, there was two surgeons there was the oral surgeon and then there was the ENT surgeon the ear nose and throat guy and the ear, nose, and throat guy was doing microscopic surgery. Uh, once it took them probably about four hours to remove the tumor. Once the tumor was removed, the ENT guy had to go in, surgeon had to go in and use and microscopically sew back these tiny, tiny blood vessels that were, he said they were like the dimension of a, of a hair. Um, so if you can imagine, he's look how lengthy that would be. Um, so Ethan has a plate in his jaw, a some kind of titanium plate in his jaw. Um, he has, his entire fibula was taken out. So this was new to us that you don't need your fibula uh, because they didn't replace it with anything and this is just kind of the surgeries that take place now. Um, you don't need your fibula for support. It's kind of it was kind of explained to us almost like it's like wisdom teeth or like an appendix or whatever it's kind of like an extra extra bone so um, and my husband was saying that somebody at work that works with him had actually told him that he broke his fibula or he shattered it or something I, uh, something broke his fibula let's say and went to emergency and they didn't even cast it they don't um, they don't treat it anymore basically so my son has a scar about I don't know, you can't really tell on camera. The entire length of his leg is the scar, and that is the entire length of his fibula that was taken out, along with the artery uh, that goes around that fibula or through the fibula or whatever. Um, this was just kind of explained to us really quickly at the post-op appointment uh, the other week. So it's taken me this long to kind of process all of this so that I can make the video. <laughs> 
or that I can even talk to anybody. I have my notifications turned off um, on Messenger and everything just because I've needed to give my brain a rest. Um, there's times, you know, I'm posting regular stuff for my work and whatever um, just because I don't want to lose my credibility there and whatever as far as my as far as work goes. Um, and there's, you know, everything's fine. We're, um, we're all coping really well. Every he, he's fine. He's healing really well physically, emotionally. It's taken a toll, um, as major surgeries like this do with m most everybody. Um, but anyways, back to the fibula. So they took out the entire fibula. They needed the artery. Uh, so they used that entire fibula to reconstruct his jaw with the artery for blood flow, I guess. And they also took out some muscle and put that in his jaw. Uh, so they they took out the whole area. Um, he's missing eight teeth. Uh, what else? He, he did have a trachea. I was calling it a tracheectomy before. It wasn't a tracheectomy. They didn't take out his trachea. I was using the wrong term. Tracheotomy. So his scar has healed from that. Um, he has a scar from ear to ear underneath his chin where they had to go in that way and take out the tumor. Um, what else? He did have, you know, he had, uh, I'm not going to go into that. It's too graphic. Um, anyways, the only thing that's not really closing up or healing right now is the bottom end of his incision, but that makes sense on his leg because gravity is going to do that. And that's where all the swelling goes. So, but I mean, he's off crutches physically. He's healing very, very well, like a superstar. Um, and his age, he's really resilient. He's a really, really strong kid. Um, so we're just working on, you know, getting his, uh, more positivity into the way he's feeling about his recovery. Um, what else? Oh, the biggest thing was, and you know, I, I, I like to be, I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm a control freak, but I think everybody likes to be in control of situations to a certain extent. Like, I don't know anybody who doesn't want to be in I mean, I guess some people don't want to be in control. Otherwise, there'd be no drug use out there. But like, I like to be in control of everything. And especially when it comes to my kids, I like to be in control and know what's happening. And, you know, so not being in control of what's happening to him. And oh, my God, this is already seven minutes long. Sorry, I was going to try to make this short. Uh, and being at the mercy of the doctors and, you know, having having information, asking for information, but only being given like small portions of information at a time can be really disconcerting. Um, so I think my doc, I think the oral surgeon, which is like, he's the boss. He's the one who there's, there's the oral surgeon and the ear, nose and throat surgeon. The oral surgeon is like the guy. So he's who we have our appointments with normally. The pathology, at the post-op appointment the other week, the pathology report came back saying that there are still cells left over that are tumorous cells. And this tumor was very, very aggressive. Um, so Ethan has to undergo treatment now to try to kill these cells so that the same thing doesn't happen again. Um, so that was a surprise and that was something that I didn't Google and I, I've tried to kind of stay away from Google because when you're Googling about medical things, sometimes you end up with more information than you want and it makes you feel worse after you've Googled it than, you know. So I've tried to kind of stay away from that, but I didn't see the, I didn't see the pathology report coming. That completely threw me for a loop. The first thing I said to both surgeons once they came out this was during surgery, so once the tumor was removed, Ethan was still in surgery because they still had to continue working on him, but they came out once the tumor was out. The first thing I said to them was, did you get it all? And they said, yes. Second thing I said to them was, was it benign? They both said yes. And they both said, that thing ain't coming back, <laughs> so to speak. So to hear in the post-op appointment that the pathology report said he's gotta go for more treatment and that there's still cells left over even after the eight teeth were removed and all of the, uh, just the aftermath of the surgery and what's going on with his, his jaw. Um, I was really surprised and so was, we were all really surprised about that, but it's something that we're gonna get through. Um, he, he'll be fine. 
Um, so that's about it. I just wanted to address, you know, questions um, and messages that I've been getting. Um, and I know that I had said that I was going to do a video um, post operative including post-operative stuff so I can't think there's there's a ton to tell you but um, a lot of it I guess doesn't really need to be said at this point um, maybe I'll I don't know I kind of at this point want to just forget about the experience at the hospital um, it was something I don't want to relive or want to talk about so I might not ever do a video about that but um, anyways I wanted to thank everyone again for all your support um, and your continued support and let you know that he's doing fine um, and he's being homeschooled right now um, just because of the nature he's still you know his jaw is very compromised so he can't go to school um, if he were to get bumped or anything it could mean a broken jaw so he's got to stay with home instruction oh and he has a really good teacher by the way but anyways, that's about it. Um, thanks again, and maybe I'll do another video soon. Maybe it'll be about fitness and happy stuff instead. <laughs> thanks, guys. Bye.